Oh. I didn't see you there. Me? Oh. I'm just smelling my JJ Maybank scented candle. Paradise on Earth. Hi besties, welcome. Today, I hope your day feels like when you fall in love with a new TV show and you binge watch it and you're in love with all the characters. I did a video called If You Like This Album, Read This Book and it did pretty well and everybody has asked me for a part two and I'm going to do one. It's just going to take me a while because I have to read more books and listen to more albums to do it. But to tide you over until part two, let me give you something a little different. Today I'm going to be telling you what books to read based on your favorite TV shows. Most of these are like my favorite shows. First up is The Outer Banks, Paradise on Earth. It's mostly shot in South Carolina, which is my home state, and I've been like most of the places that they go in Outer Banks. So it's really cool to see that on screen. If you love Outer Banks because of the setting, the southern marsh and the beaches, I think you should read Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens. It's about a girl who lives in the marsh and she kind of lives on her own and she's very poor, Pogue-esque, if you will. <laughs> And she has to kind of grow up and raise herself in the marsh all on her own. And it's about the few relationships she chooses to form with other people. Then there's also a crime element, just like in Outer Banks, because she becomes a suspect for a murder. Sound familiar? And she has to clear her own name, basically. This book leans very heavily on the setting of the marsh, of the southern beaches, prominent families, very different class backgrounds, just like the Pogues and the Kooks in Outer Banks. Now, if on the other hand, your favorite thing about Outer Banks is the friend group and the found family of the Pogues, I have a different recommendation for you. The Raven Boys by Maggie Steve Otter. This book is also about a group of idiot teenage boys who a really cool girl hangs out with for reasons that are confusing to us all. They have to go on basically a treasure hunt. They're not looking for gold. In this book, they're looking for the tomb of a Welsh king because they think that if they find this tomb, a wish can be granted to them and they need that wish for reasons that you'll find out if you read the book. They're very similar in tone in that it's a group of idiot teenagers who are dealing with really, really difficult stuff and they bond together to deal with it because it's easier together than it is alone. Next we have Gilmore Girls. If you're on the road. It's very much my comfort watch. My mom and I have a very similar relationship to Lorelai and Rory and for that reason, it's very special to me. I love the female relationships and the parental relationships that are displayed in Gilmore Girls and I think there's just so much depth to the characters. If your favorite thing about Gilmore Girls is Rory and Lorelai's relationship, I think you should read Nothing to See Here by Kevin Wilson. This book follows a woman who is kind of down and out. Her career plans have not panned out. And then one of her old college roommates calls and asks if she'll be the live-in nanny to her two children. When they get irritated or agitated, they combust and they burst into flames. It doesn't hurt them. The parents of these children are like political figures and they don't want anybody to find out about this. She goes to take care of these kids with this very strange affliction. The whole book is about her journey of really falling in love with these kids, forming this really, really strong parental bond and kind of raising them on her own, uh, which reminds me of Lorelai and Rory. But this book is also super madcap and weird. It kind of has to be because it's about kids who burst into flames. It has so much wit, just like Gilmore Girls, and so much heart, just like Gilmore Girls. But it's also about a woman finding her way in the world and finding solace and friendship in these children she's raising. That's so much like what Lorelai experiences throughout Gilmore Girls and also what Rory begins to experience as she's going to college and trying to figure out her way and as she's struggling. This book was so short and so sweet. I think I read it in like two days. I just remember feeling so warm while I read it and that's the same feeling that I get when I watch Gilmore Girls. But if your favorite part of Gilmore Girls is Stars Hollow and the weird wacky characters that we run into, might I recommend one of my favorite books of all time, a children's book 
Because of Winn-Dixie by Kate DiCamillo. Because of Winn-Dixie is all about our main character, India Opal Baloney, who's about 11 years old. She finds a dog in the supermarket and decides to take him home. For the rest of the book, she goes around her town and meets kind of all of these weird, wacky, interesting characters and gets to know them and gets to love them. I think it's very reminiscent of when Lorelai and Rory go on walk and talks through Stars Hollow and run into pretty much everybody who lives there and have, you know, Miss Patty and Babette and in Because of Winn-Dixie you have Gloria Dump and Miss Franny at the library. You have Otis in the pet store and Luke in the diner. All of the characters are so unique because Winn-Dixie is a children's book. It gives me that same warmth that Gilmore Girls gives me and that same kind of comfort. Next up we have The Office. <laughs> I have watched the entirety of The Office probably nine times. I know it's kind of a meme now to like The Office, but I do think that show is so popular because it's so good. That show cracks me up, but it also has really strong characters that you really learn to love throughout the show, even if you hate them at the beginning. So I think it's a really impressive feat of television and I love it a lot. I think if you liked it, you might like one More Thing, Stories and Other Stories by B.J. Novak. If you're a fan of The Office, the name B.J. Novak might sound familiar, and that's because B.J. Novak plays Ryan on The Office, but was also a staff writer. So if you like the humor of The Office, B.J. Novak did so much writing on that show that you'll probably like the humor he brings to his book too. You can definitely see him bring some elements of his time on The Office into the book in the ways that he so effortlessly satirizes normal things. There are just like these weird truths about people that he'll find and then play with until you're cracking up. And that's what's so funny about The Office is that these characters, they're exaggerated versions of real people that exist. And B.J. Novak does that same thing in his short story collection. This collection is hilarious. I have read this collection a few times now. The way B.J. Novak can kind of manipulate a reader or make a reader think a little bit more about preconceived ideas that they had before they read the book is so interesting to me. And I just genuinely think he's such a talent and that his writing is so funny, but it also makes me want to be alive. I don't know how to explain it. That sounds kind of morbid. His writing reminds reminds me of the tiny joys that exist in everyday life. The Office kind of does that too. It's, you know, it's about the little moments that make a life. What's your favorite episode of The Office if you've watched it? Next, we have New Girl. I recently rewatched all of New Girl. I love that show so much. I'm in love with Nick Miller. I love that show. I think it's so fantastic. I have two kind of weird recommendations. First one is the YA romance novel Dash and Lily's Book of Dares, which is a Christmas book and also its own Netflix show. The New Girl Christmas episodes are always the best. Dash and Lily feels like the New Girl Christmas episode. Dash and Lily are two teenagers living in New York City and Dash finds a journal in the Strand bookstore that has a dare on it from this girl Lily who he does not know yet. But they begin to just exchange the journal and they don't know each other and the journal goes back and forth and they do all these different dares around New York and they have to provide proof that they've done the dares. It's very goofy, very silly, uh, but it reminds me of Nick and Jess a little bit in that Lily is just so hopeful, the forever optimist, loves Christmas more than anything, doesn't have a cynical bone in her body. Dash could not care less about Christmas. And so their two personalities clashing reminds me a little bit of Nick and Jess and that Jess kind of helps Nick to be a little bit more open-hearted. Nick tries really hard to keep that alive in Jess in moments when she's feeling cynical. I also have another recommendation for New Girl which is Twelfth Night by William Shakespeare. Shakespeare and like a modern day sitcom don't seem like they would go together, but I chose Twelfth Night because Twelfth Night is so ridiculous. All the things that happen in that play are just unbelievable. And that's how I feel when I watch New Girl. I'm like, how did we get ourselves here? How did we get ourselves into this situation? And that's how Twelfth Night feels. And additionally in Twelfth Night, you have a lot of really stupid men. And that's the plot of New Girl. <laughs> Twelfth Night follows Viola, who believes her brother has died in a shipwreck. So she dresses up as her brother 
character and tries to kind of go about the life he would have had. She falls in love with somebody who's in love with this other girl who falls in love with her dressed up as Sebastian and it's just like this it's like a love triangle but it, it's like a love dodecagon and it goes a million different places and the characters in Twelfth Night are so strong and the thing about New Girl is that the characters are what make it so good. That show wouldn't be nearly as good if the characters weren't so wonderful and hilarious and Twelfth Night is the same way. So I think if you like really strong hilarious characters that are idiots you'd like Twelfth Night. Next we have Fleabag. <laughs> The show has never eviscerated me in the way that Fleabag eviscerated me. When I tell you I had no tears left to cry, conspiracy theory, Ariana Grande wrote no tears left to cry after finishing Fleabag, starring Miss Phoebe Waller-Bridge. And if you liked Fleabag, I have two books to recommend to you. One is Slow Days Fast Company, The World of Flesh in LA by Eve Babbitts, which is a book of kind of essays or sketches or scenes about Eve Babbitt's time in California with various lovers and she just talks so bluntly about sex and love with these men and what she sees in these different men and what she's looking for and how California exists in her mind in relation to these men. Her very confident and strong voice about womanhood and sexuality reminds me a lot of Fleabag. It's just such a deft and beautiful exploration of womanhood and sexuality and what it is to love men and be a young woman in the world. Fleabag is a lot funnier than Slow Days Fast Company but that's because Fleabag is a lot funnier than pretty much everything in the world. And my second recommendation for Fleabag, Feminists Don't Wear Pink and Other Lies, edited by Scarlett Curtis. This is just a book of essays each by a different woman about what feminism means to them. I liked this essay collection a lot because just like the title kind of implies there's a lot of exploration of the lies surrounding feminism and kind of the stereotypes you don't have to be any one thing to be a feminist. Fleabag dives into that so much. There's just a lot of empathy towards learning what being a feminist means in this book which I think is really necessary and it's easy to kind of fall back into knocking other women down because they're not feminist enough or they don't know enough about feminism and this book kind of combats that and I think so does Fleabag. Next up we have Never Have I Yet. This is a Netflix show. <laughs> It follows a bunch of high school dorks trying to be cool. This is the very basic premise of Never Have I Ever. It's hilarious. Matrei Ramakrishnan is fantastic and one of my favorite young actors. I think this show is just really great. It's what I wish I had when I was in high school. If your favorite thing about Never Have I Ever is Fabiola, you should read You Should See Me in a Crown. You Should See Me in a Crown follows a black girl who is queer and dealing with her own sexuality, kind of grappling with that, who wants to run for prom queen. Lo and behold, a new girl comes to school. She's a redhead skater girl and she's super freaking cool. Some romance ensues and it reminds me a lot of Fabiola. If you love Fab and Eve from Never Have I Ever, you should read You Should See Me in a Crown by Leah Johnson. If you're more of a Davy gal, might I suggest Winger by Andrew Smith. Now, the drawback to this is that it is about a white man. But if you can get past that, it's worth it. This book I really, really like. I remember thinking it was just such an accurate depiction of like being a young man and saying stupid things that you shouldn't say and then getting called out on it and learning. We follow our main character, Ryan Dean, as he goes to a private high school and is on the rugby team. And he has a crush on one of his good friends and he has a group of guy friends who are idiots and dumb and say stupid shit all the time. And it really is just a book with a really interesting character arc. One of the reasons that I thought about this book in relation to Never Have I Ever is that Davy is constantly getting into problems that she causes herself and then getting mad at other people because of it. Says so this guy. And I feel like he and Davy are very similar in those ways. Like they're headstrong. And I also think they both have anger issues. Ryan Dean gets to take it out on the field when he plays rugby, but Davy just gets to take it out on people. I just remember thinking this book was really fun and engrossing and I remember reading it in like two days. But yeah, I think if you like Davy's self-destructive tendencies, you'll see the same thing in Ryan Dean. Next, let's go to Hawkins. Stranger Things is one of my favorite shows. If you like Stranger Things, I have a recommendation for you. The Body by Stephen King. The Body is the novella that inspired the movie Stand By Me. These four young boys who 
hear that there is a dead body somewhere near their town and that there's a reward if they find it. They hike all the way across their town over a train track through a leech infested river through a junkyard with a scary dog to try to find this dead body. The camaraderie of these four boys, the idiocy of these four young boys in the 80s just reminds me so much of Will and Mike and Lucas and Dustin in Stranger Things. Their determination to find this body is very akin to these boys' determination to stop the Demogorgon, the bond between those boys, and the slight horror element of this dead body and trying to find this dead body reminds me so much of Stranger Things. And I think if you like Stranger Things, you would really like The Body by Stephen King. Next up, I have a CW classic, and that is Riverdale. <laughs> the Town with Pep. One of my favorite genre of YouTube videos is the Riverdale cast dunking on the writers for however many minutes straight, because they should. The writing of Riverdale is bad. Let's all be real. But the writing of this book is not If We Were Villains by M.L. Rio. This book follows a group of young adults who are in college at this very elite Shakespeare acting program. One of their cohort dies suspiciously. Who did it? This book is a little bit more dark academia than Riverdale. Riverdale's more dark, stupid. This has Riverdale vibes, but if it was executed a whole lot better. This is in my opinion, better than Riverdale. As far as I know, none of the kids in this book dropped out of school in the fifth grade to peddle drugs for their Nana, but I also wouldn't be surprised. Okay, last, I have a fun one, which is Bob's Burgers. <laughs> This show is so funny. I think the voice actors on the show are brilliant and I love the animation. And I usually don't like animated shows because for some reason I have a really hard time paying attention to them. So for Bob's Burgers, let me recommend you Calvin and Hobbes. I grew up reading Calvin and Hobbes. These comics are genuinely so funny. They still to this day crack me up. Even though they're comics about a kid and his best friend who is a tiger stuffed animal that comes to life when they're alone. It's very adult in that Every time I read it, I understand more than I did the first time. Bill Watterson does such a good job of making the jokes land for kids and for adults, which I think is so cool. One of the reasons I thought about this for Bob's Burgers is that Calvin is always giving his dad shit and that's literally Bob's Burgers. It's like all the kids giving Bob shit. Calvin is Louise. They're both so cynical and sarcastic and hell raisers, like absolute nuisances, but so funny. And there's like a million of them, just like Bob's Burgers. They're there's so many different collections. This is just like the OG one. There's like no better feeling than like holding a Calvin and Hobbes book and just sitting there with like snacks and just reading Calvin and Hobbes all day. We have reached the end. We're done. Tell me what your favorite TV shows are. Maybe I'll do a part two of this one as well. I have a lot of really fun video plans for the rest of the year that I'm super excited about that you won't want to miss. So subscribe. I'll leave my Instagram Goodreads and Storygraph in the description so you can follow me on any or all of those accounts if you would like to. I love to see what y'all are doing and to talk to you guys on there. In case you haven't heard it today, I love you. Bye.